Hi, my name is Brian Shoemaker. I'm president of DBT Solutions. Uh, we're going to uh, go through the functional and uh, descriptions of the new DBT40 40, uh, 40 gigahertz uh, gigaprobes. Uh, they'll be applicable for high-speed TDR, spectrum analysis, as well as the ability to hook up to vector uh, network analyzers for making two and four port measurements so let me take you through this uh, presentation so you get an idea how these probes work. Today I'd like to introduce the new DBT40 Giga probes. There are 40 gigahertz probes. Um, this is the uh, dual kit that uh, we, it contains uh, two probes and various accessories that I'll take out and describe each one of them and how they, they work together as a kit to provide both 100 ohms, 50 ohms, and multi mode measurements and gives you the ability to connect them to manipulators for hands-free probing. So to start off with we have two 40 gigahertz probes completely redesigned for those who are familiar with the DVT-40s. They come with a protective sleeve that comes off and when you're not using them, then you should put the sleeve back on to prevent the probes from being damaged. The, as you can see, it's a radically different uh, app design from the DVT-40. The connector and the um, probe area are completely redesigned. On the connector side, what we've done is we've incorporated two 40 gigahertz K connectors that are in a Y connect connection so that you can plug cables on here so that they can fan out and you don't crimp the, uh, the cables when they're attached. That makes it easier for connecting them to manipulators and for hand probing. This connection assembly inside here uh, maintains an air gap that, uh, to the twin X material that we use here for connecting the uh, probe tips. Inside here, it maintains a, um, a microwave air gap that uh, gives us 40 gigahertz connection to these connectors. And what that does is, is it minimizes the reflection and provides a higher return loss capability for this probe. If you do not have a good return loss measurement here, then it's nearly impossible to de-embed the probe. So this, these kinds of tools and techniques have been used to make it easier to de-embed them with DNAs, TDRs, spectrum analyzers, where that's required. On the, on the probe end, <clears throat> we have a new ground collar assembly that uh, has three pins in it that are compliant, that is, they're, they're spring-loaded, and can be removed um, by removing it we're able to, by pushing the pins from the front side to the back side, we're able to configure the ground configuration in relationship to the signal pins. So you could have a, a ground signal, ground signal, ground, or any combination of that just by removing one of these pins and then applying it back onto where it was assembled. In the most basic mode, um, without the ground collar, the um, probe uh, has a 100 ohm between these two uh, single pins that you see here. And if I short one of the pins to the outer shield and put a ground cap on it, then you have a 50 ohm probe. The probe has less, approximately 4.5 picosecond loss in the probe itself and a 40 gigahertz bandwidth. That includes your insertion return loss. The DVD-40s can be converted into several different modes. It can be converted into a 50 ohm probe. It's normally a 100 ohm odd mode probe. And it can be also converted to a, uh, what they call a multi-mode probe, where you'd have measurements where you're doing common and, and odd mode, like for example, with, with a VNA, where you're trying to do a full port measurement. Let me just step through uh, some of the tools that's included in the kit that allows you to convert the probe into these various modes. 
So to convert it into a 50 ohm probe, we have this, this kit here. It's got a set of wires, shrink wrap, and, and a uh, shorting cap. Basically what you do here is we use the additional tools that come with it, maybe a magnifying glass and a set of tweezers. And what we're going to do is we're going to wire wrap um, one of the probes, put the shorting cap on this end, and now this side can be used as a 50 ohm probe with less, probably about four picoseconds of loss. That's ideal for using with very, very high speed uh, TDR modules where you're doing failure analysis and you want really good resolution. Or if you want to use it with a spectrum analyzer, spectrum analyzers will require a 50 ohm input. So you can do a 40 gigahertz um, a measurement sniffer application with the spectrum analyzers and I believe that the uh, probe maintains the phase measurements uh, fairly well as well. The other applications is, say for example, you want to change the pitch of the probe. Um, there are no springs attached to these probes tips, so that maintains signal quality. And if I put any kind of springs or anything in front of these probe tips, you're going to have ringing and it's going to reduce your um, bandwidth performance of the probe. Now, to change the pitch of these signal pins, we have uh, a tool that comes in there that we can just put the probes in the holes and it'll and just wiggle them around a little bit and it will planarize the probes and it will also set the probe uh, pitch. If you want something smaller, we've, we've, you can set these probes down to, I've done um, 400 micron or even smaller. A lot of the flex uh, circuitry and cell phones require that. In order to do that, um, it, what you can do is, is to simply, just very, very simply just kind of tap on the probe tips until, and you want to focus on just the probe tips and the larger base of this uh, tweezer. When you press them together, then what you do then is you can just use a very simple gapper that you can buy from any auto place for $6 and place that in between and set the uh, uh, gap between the probes precisely for what you need. The uh, probe kit also comes with a wrench setting tool. So when you want to hook up your cables, you just simply just attach your cables and tighten them down. Now, <clears throat> hand probing is, is um, one application that we can do with these probes. It has an Ultim gripper. It's very strong and it's not removable. And so you can either, you know, hand probe this way or a lot of people attach these to uh, manipulators or that may be incorporated into a probe station. In order to do that, we've given you some adapters. The first adapter is just, just like a little simple L bracket here. And the L bracket uh, comes attached and you can certainly remove it if you're just doing hand probing. It has a couple different holes to accommodate different um, holes that might be uh, on your uh, end of your uh, manipulator. One of the tools we have in here is a, uh, a barrel and this barrel comes with a, a screw that essentially what you can do is, is remove this and attach this simply to this guy here. And the next thing we'll do is we'll hook it up to a couple different types of manipulators. So let me summarize what's in our DBT40-1MM kit. You get two um, multi-mode probes. They're 40 gigahertz. And you get um, uh, a tool for connecting the um, cables to the end of the um, probes. You also get a 50 ohm uh, adapter kit that wire wraps and allows you to set each of the probes to 50 ohms. You also get uh, some tweezers and magnifying glass uh, to assist in doing your wire wrapping. It also comes with a pitch setting tool 
that allow you to adjust it to uh, uh, 0.81 and 1.27 millimeters. And with the um, tweezers, you can set it for uh, pretty much any pitch down to probably 400 micron that is on the signal to signal pins. It also comes with an adapter that allows you to connect it to um, uh, pro manipulators uh, using by connecting to the wide angle bracket. If you want more information, please visit our website www.gigaprobes.com or call us directly at 650-593-7083. Thank you for your time.